They helped earn the Jumbos a 63 and 37 record, including 24 and 14 in the NESCAP. They were part of the 2020 NESCAP championship team, Tufts First. That Jumbo team was headed to the NCAA Elite Eight before the tournament was canceled due to COVID. Last year, they were part of the leadership group who guided the team through a canceled season, keeping the attitude positive in the team sights and getting better every day. Now this season, they are leaders of a team that has won nine of its last 11 and stands at six and two in the nest game. In the classroom, they have combined for an excellent 3.52 grade point average. Now let's meet each senior and their parents. Number 23, Will Brady. He is like a coach on the floor and can always be found in the right place at the right time on both sides of the ball. A starter this season, Will has made the most of his minutes throughout his career with a 12.2 scoring average per 40 minutes. His 118 career three-pointers are among the team's all-time top 20. The jumper will miss the toughness and competitiveness that he brings on a daily basis. Congratulations and thank you, Will. Number three, Eric Lebron. <laughs> Next time is major, Eric is joined today by his mother Anna and his father Keith. Eric is the epitome of a team first player. It's no surprise that his favorite place on the campus is Cousin Gymnasium. He made a key contribution off the bench to the 2019 Jumbo team that played into the NESCAC semifinals and has struggled with the team through thick and thin in the year since. He has been asked to fill a number of different roles during his time at Tufts and always answered the call. The Jumbo will miss his positive energy and leadership. Congratulations and thank you, Eric. Team will miss Kieran's passion and ability to put the team above all of us. Congratulations and thank you, Kieran.
Cousins Gym, where the Tufts Jumbos will be taking on the Williams East today. I'm Noah Goldstein here alongside Jared Cohen. Jared, we have a great East team, very accomplished this season, 14 and two. And on the other side, we have a Jumbos team that came out of the gate a little bit slower, has won four straight. What do you see as some keys to the game for both sides today? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It's a great matchup on hand today. Two teams towards the top of the NESCAC. Tufts sitting at 6-2 and two in conference. The Eves sitting at 4-2. and two. Big playoff implications for this game. In terms of if you're looking for a win for the Jumbos, you gotta, you got to force the Eves off a of three-point line. Make them attack the basket. They are an unbelievable three-point shooting team. They shoot over 40% from deep as a team. Tufts as a whole shoots under 30%. The discrepancy between the two teams cannot be understated. So if you're the Jumbos and you want to play your basketball, you need to get the Eves off the three-point line, you need to get them in the paint, and then on offense you need to do your thing. Attack them, attack them in the paint. Don't settle for mid-range jump shots, shots early in the shot clock. Play to your strengths. That's going to be really important if the Jumbos want to come out of here with a win. Yeah, those are great points, Jared. We talked about it earlier. The Eves love to shoot the ball, and they do it well at that 41% mark from three-point layout. The Jumbos, for their sake, have, have defended teams well in conference. Opponents only shooting 24.4% from three in conference games. So the Jumbos have really stepped up to the test, has them tied for second place in the NESCAC despite their early season struggles. We'll see what they can do. Offensively, who are you looking at as key players for the Jumbos today? Well, for the Jumbos, obviously, it all centers around Luke Rogers. It's senior night. Uh, it's the last weekend of the year. We just saw presentation of the seniors' jerseys. He is the focal point of this offense. Going up against an Eves team that has, you know, a perimeter shooting and they can do it all. Nate Kerr in the center on the Eves is going to be an interesting matchup for Luke Rogers today. He can stretch the floor. He can play inside. He's actually got an inch on Luke Rogers. He's six foot nine. Uh, the dynamic there is going to be important. Luke Rogers needs to win that matchup if the Tufts Jumbos want to come out with a win. Other than him, uh, it's really going to be balanced basketball. Tufts is at its best when everyone touches the ball. Everyone gets good shots, and the ball doesn't stick. If they can do that, uh, they'll have a good chance of coming out here with a win, but it's going to be a tough matchup. The Eves will start Prowitt Smith, Karen, Spivey, Porter, and Jones. And for the Jumbos, it's the seniors. Rogers, Morris, Brady, Kindig, and DeBrine. Rogers and Karen will take the tip. And Rogers bats it back and unable to save it as Will Brady. So it'll be Eve's ball to start this one. To inbound here is Spivey. Prowitt Smith will set the offense for the jumbo uh, for the Eves as he goes right. Spivey at the top, swings out to Porter. Porter fakes a shot, back to Spivey. Spivey feeds in low. Jones with the dribble, kicks out. Porter for three, and he got it. Off Corner the, three from Declan Porter. Off the bat right away, looking for a shot from deep. Porter's probably their best three-point shooter, over 40% from the year, and a team high in makes and attempts. First possession of the game, they get a good shot. Not what the Jumbos were looking for. And a good interior pass from Will Brady. And Luke Rogers able to finish through contact with a little reverse layup. Exactly what I was talking about. If they get their shots, go get your shots. Each team wants to play to its strength. Rogers in the paint. That's what the Jumbos are looking for. Jones with the dribble down low. Rogers on him. Jones looking to pass. Now he puts one up. Misses. But able to clean it up and put it in is Nate Karen. Yeah, great awareness from Karen right there. Not sure if that was a pass or a shot. But no one in the area to box him out. Easy put back. Kindig with the ball now, swings out to Morris. Morris looking for a shot, has Rogers though. Rogers swings to Brady. Brady down low to Rogers. Rogers trying to use his physicality, puts it up front side of the rim, unable to get it to go, and it's off Kindig, and it's going to be Eve's ball. Crowett Smith brings it up now for the Eves. Swings out wide to Jones. Jones back up to Spivey. Spivey to Jones. Karen down low, finds Spivey. Spivey with the kick out. Porter again from three. In and out. And that's going to be out. They're going to say off the Eves. Jumbo, get a lucky break there. It'll be their ball. Yeah, certainly a lucky break. Eves doing a good job using interior penetration to get open looks on the outside. They're going to try to do that the entire game. You can't keep giving Porter shots like that. As I said, you've got to get them off the perimeter. DeBrian now with it. Finds Rodgers. Rogers to Brady. 
Brady to the left hand, now switches to the right. Into the corner, he finds Luke Rogers. Luke Rogers, little mid-range jump shot, back iron, no good, rebound Jones. He's gonna push the pace. Here comes Javon Jones. Jones gonna take it himself, now kicks it out. Prowitt Smith, step back fake, and he passes to Porter, Declan Porter, back rim, no good, rebound Brennan Morris. Brennan Morris gonna push the pace now for the Jumbos. Morris loses the handle for a second, but gets it back. Will Brady on it. Brendan Morris feeds Luke Rogers down low. Luke Rogers with the left hand. Tries to finish with the left. Misses it wide. And Prowett Smith with the rebound. He pushes the pace. Prowett Smith to his left. Finishes. Unable to get it go. Tried to draw the foul on Luke Rogers there. Didn't get the call. Yeah, and notice on offense, first four jumbo possessions have ended with a shot from Luke Rogers. Obviously, he is their go-to guy. They want him to get those shots up, but the ball needs to move more. If it ends with Rogers in the paint, every possession, you're telegraphing your offense to Williams. Uh, real starters coming in the game now. Uh, see if Chuffs can make an adjustment, get that ball moving a little more. Aronson on the ball now and goes down to Rogers. Rogers working down low. Tries to finish and unable to get it to go. Karen gets the rebound. Prowitt Smith now on it. Prowitt Smith passes to Spivey. Williams seems content to pass around the perimeter and look for that three point shot as Spivey penetrates and kicks out Karen for three and gets it to go. I'm telling you, one through five on the court for Williams can hit it from deep, including Karen. He's hitting 50% of his threes on the year and he's their starting center. This penetration leading to open shots has killed the Jumbos three times already early in this game. They need to make an adjustment. Will Brady finds Dylan Thorner in the corner. Thorner passes back out to Brennan Morris who goes back to Thorner. Thorner down low to Rogers. Rogers kicks out Thorner, pump fake, and now fires to the corner. Will Brady for three, doesn't get it to go. Luke Rogers with the rebound though. Rogers with a pass to a cutting Will Brady who gets it to go. Unbelievable pass right there from Luke Rogers. No look, cutting to the paint. Those types of looks, when the defense is focused on Luke Rogers and he can help make others make a play, that's a winning type of play right there. And a really nice cut from Will Brady. Crowett Smith now with it for the Eves. And an interior pass looking for Crowett Smith from Karen was broken up and it'll be jumbo ball. Yeah, great awareness from Aronson on that. Knew his man had him beat going to the paint, but you know, face guarded and both hands in the air. That pass is no chance of making it there. Deflected off of Williams. Eight to four game right now. Jumbos want to respond. A little bit of a line change there from the Eves. A bunch of substitutions coming in. The Jumbos bring in Shroom and Gettings. Aronson with a pass to Gettings, and Gettings is blocked, but he's fouled. Quick action off the pick and roll right there. Leads to a good shot at the rim and a foul call. You know, they're doubling off the pick and roll. Tufts has size on the floor right now, and they can take advantage of that. Brandon Arnold picks up the foul on that one. It'll be interesting to see as the game goes on if Karen continues to mirror the minutes of Luke Rogers. Did early coming off when Rogers came off. As Gettings misses the first of the pair. It's a good point right there. It's one of the more obvious matchups on the floor for this game. The two starting centers are two of the best players on both of their teams. Karen leads the Eves in assists as well as being second on the team in points and tied for first in rebounds. So having guys of that dynamic ability on the floor at the same time is something both teams are looking for. Gettings gets the second one to go and the deficit is now three. Brandon Arnold now with a pass. He's got Stoddard. Stoddard going to his right. He's stuck in the corner and throws a pass stolen by Truman Gettings. Will Brady now looking to push the pace. He's got Dylan Thorner. Thorner thought about a shot, didn't take it. Tyler Aronson at the top. Aronson to his right, kicks to the corner. Will Brady pump fake, back to Aronson. Aronson, fadeaway jumper, no good. And the rebound is collected by Arnold. Arnold finds Spivey. Spivey's gonna push the pace now. Spivey, dribble, drive, kick out. Now another pass, and stolen by Tyler Aronson. Aronson pickpocketed Stoddard, taking it himself, tried to draw a foul, and he's blocked, but it goes out of bounds. Yeah, Jumbos are playing great physical defense right now. Back-to-back -back possessions, you can see that one right there, ended in a steal. Uh, going to his left on the break, wanted to draw the foul right there. They're calling it a clean block out of bounds. 
But overall, Tufts is holding its own on the defensive end. They're putting bodies on the east. They just need to be more efficient and get better shots on the offensive end. Carson Cohen checks in for the Jumbos as he inbounds the pass to Tyler Aronson, who's able to jump, knock down the mid-range jumper, and it's a one-point deficit for the Jumbos. Mark Taylor now with it. Passes to the top to Stoddard. Stoddard to Arnold. Arnold looking for Prowitt Smith. Prowitt Smith, the leading scorer for this Eves team. And he dribble drives to his right before tries to pass out. Stoddard able to come up with it. Pass in, and Arnold now on the ball. Arnold with a mid-range jumper, no good. Rebounded by Aronson. A lot of more energy for the Jumbos now as Dylan Thorner comes and tries a three, and he gets it. Defender hits the floor right there. The bench is going crazy. When the Jumbos play to their strengths on offense, they can get buckets, and that's what they're doing right now. Taylor with the pass to Arnold. At the top is Ruffley. Ruffley's provided a spark off the bench for the Eves all year. Mark Taylor now. A lot of commotion in that corner by the Jumbos bench as the pass from Ruffley goes to Arnold. A great interior pass and the bucket. 10-10 game. Yeah, sometimes good offense beats good defense. Tum the Jumbos are playing suffocating on defense right now uh, to the point where open guys are being ignored. But on that one, a good interior pass beats good defense from the Jumbos. Carson Cohen with the ball and feeds in inside. Passed out. Dylan Thorner with it. Thorner with the dribble drive. Finishes through contact. Unable to get it to go, but picks up the foul. That's going to go on Alex Stoddard. And notice Truman getting is really a force in the pick and roll game. You know, setting them around, putting a body on a player opens up huge lanes to the hoop. And lanes to the hoop lead to good shots and foul opportunities like that one right there. Jared, you made a great point earlier about the Jumbo's offense running through Luke Rogers, getting good minutes from Truman Gettings when Rogers is on the bench is really important for this Jumbo team. Yeah, it really has been throughout the year in the games where Rogers missed, and of course when he's on the bench, both Gettings and Bobby Stewart, both freshmen, have really give, given the Jumbo's great minutes at center. Today we've seen Gettings, and he's a physical presence, and when your best player comes off the floor and you replace him with another physical presence, a guy that will you know, give his all every time up and down the court, it's really a dynamic uh, you know, part of the basketball team. And Thorner's second free throw is up and good, so he knocks down the pair. Jumbo's up 12 to 10 as Prowett Smith brings it across the timeline for the East. Porter passes up top. It's going to be collected there and passed around. Arnold now with it. Arnold picks up his dribble but finds Prowett Smith. Prowett Smith driving to his left, and he's going to get called for a travel. The Jumbos have adjusted tremendously on defense since the first couple possessions of the game. They were sagging off guys in the perimeter and biting on cutting players. Now they're sticking to their men, playing suffocating defense, and it's preventing the East from getting those wide open jump shots in the perimeter that you know they want. Dylan Thorner now going to his left. Loses the handle for a second, but gets it back to Gettings. Gettings back to Thorner. Thorner feeding down low to Gettings. Gettings going to his right. Little hook shot. Bounces around and out. And pushing the other way is Declan Porter and the Eves. Glatzer now with the ball. Looking to make something happen. He finds Prowett Smith. Prowett Smith's going to fire from three. No good. Rebound Truman Gettings. And the Jumbo's pushing the other way with Tyler Aronson. Aronson out wide. Thorner from three. Got it. Time out from Williams. The Jumbos are playing with tremendous pace right now. They're not afraid to push the ball down the court against the Williams subs. They know they have the speed advantage. They know they have the strength advantage. And they are taking advantage of that. A really good stretch there from this Jumbo team. Came out of the gate a little bit slow. Since had some subs come into the game, started to knock down some shots. And the Jumbo offense looks as good as it ever has. Yeah, great energy from the Jumbos right now from the bench, from the players in the court, from the crowd here at Cousins. Uh, five point lead with 12 minutes to go in the half, exactly where they want to be. But the Williams starters re-entering the game, they need to stick to that defense that they've been playing the last couple of possessions. You can't fall back into the traps that they saw at the start of the game. The Williams East are such a dangerous team all over the floor, leaving them open shots is just not gonna work out. As Jared mentioned, starters back in for the Eves. Porter now gives to Prowett Smith. Prowett Smith up top to Karen. Karen with a nice pass inside to Spivey who slams it home. Yeah, a great backdoor cut. Uh, 
Again, that's just the result of the fact either way he goes, it's a threat on the offense. He pops back out for a shot. He can knock it down. He pops in. He can throw it down. Either way, it's, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Dylan Thorner pass to Casey McLaren. McLaren pump fake, and they're going to say he jumped. And call that a travel. It'll be Eve's ball. So the inbound pass will go to Private Smith, who will take it up for the Eves. Declan Porter now. Spivey. Spivey to Karen. Karen. Dribble handoff to Jones. Jones out. Porter three. No good. He likes that spot, doesn't he? He likes that spot, but look how the Jumbos, they're fighting over screens. That's how you really get to three-point shooters. You cannot go under three, under screens, excuse me. McLaren now from the corner. No good. Rebound Rogers. Luke Rogers looking to find a pass out and throws one up. Tyler Aronson on it. Aronson going to his left now. Now cutting back right. Pass to the corner. Dylan Thorner. 4-3. He gets it to go. It has just already for him lead up to six, and the Jumbos definitely like what they're seeing on offense. Their driving kick game is doing wonders against this Eves defense. A little taste of their own medicine for the Eves. Let's see how they respond. Corner pass to Jones. Jones looking to go in, sees a little size advantage, takes it up himself, and gets it to go. He was working down on Casey McLaren and able to take it to the rack. Carson Cohen now for the Jumbos. He's gonna take it himself, tried to find a corner pass to Casey McLaren, off of Eve's body, and it'll be jumbo ball underneath the hoop. Yeah, great help defense from the Eves right there. Two men come crashing towards Carson Cohen. Ball deflects off them out of bounds, but a reset for the jumbos right here. Carson Cohen now. And he inbounds to Rogers. Rogers gives out to Cohen. Cohen up top to uh, Aronson. Aronson fires from three. Back rim, no good. Rogers fighting underneath. And it went off his hand last. Jones knocked it into the hand of Rodgers, and it's Eve's ball going the other way. Yeah, that ball off Rodgers, that type of shot, not necessarily the type of shot you're looking for for the Jumbos. you got to play your own pace, got to, you know, play to your strengths. Off dribble threes, off screens, not doing what they do best. Got to get away from that. Spivey now with it. Spencer, Spencer Spivey up top to Nate Karen. Karen has some space, goes back to Spivey. Karen looking to work down low on Rogers near the baseline. Passes out to Porter. Porter now going towards his left. Shot clock running down. Porter fires. Gets it to go. A little fadeaway jump shot. Yeah, when you got a team full of jump shooters, possessions end that way. Look at the difference. Rogers and Karen on that possession. Karen has an inch on Rogers, but you know, Rogers is so much bigger. He put a body on him, stopped him in his tracks. The ball completely stalled there. But when you have guys like Declan Porter, who can make their own shot and hit difficult jump shots, you're going to get bailed out on possessions like that. A fun start to this one. Two teams that are shooting the ball very well for the Jumbos. A welcome surprise after yeah. some of the struggles they've had from beyond the arc so far this season. Absolutely. Matchup living to the hype in this last weekend of the regular season. Brennan Morris, interior pass to Luke Rogers, who's tried to finish with the left, misses it, and it's going to be going the other way to the Eves. Looks like Rodgers may have accidentally got Spivey in the eye, but he's all right. Spivey's actually going to ask for a sub now. Looks like he got poked in the eye a little, and Prowett Smith will come back on the court. A little bit of discussion with the coaching staff. And Glatzer's inbound pass goes up court to Karen. Karen gives back to Glatzer, who will take it up himself. Glatzer to Porter. Porter to Karen. Karen to Jones. Jones to the left hand. He's got Rodgers on him now. Puts up a high arcing shot and gets the shooter's roll. Tie game 18 all. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Jones got a first step on Rodgers there. Got by him. Really difficult up and under. Spinning that off the top of the glass. But you got to you got to be able to hit those shots if you want to get by the hulking presence of Luke Rogers. Will Brady to his right. Now kicks out Carson Cohen. Pump fake. Back to Brady in the corner. Brady fires from three. Front rim no good. Luke Rogers rebound. Rogers back to Brady. Brady to Thorner. Thorner pump fakes now. Thorner feeds in to Rogers. Rogers going to his left. Now to his right. Turns around. Lefty layup. Good. 
That's what he can do for you. Offensive rebound, bucket on the inside in the same position. I had it in my game notes for today. If the Jumbos want to win, they need to win on the board. So far, they are doing that. Rodgers has gobbled up several offensive rebounds. Got to keep that going. And Karen with the right hand now, unable to get it to the O, trying to match Rodgers. And Carson Cohen bringing up the court, pushing the pace for the Jumbos. Cohen to Rodgers, out to Thorner. Carson Cohen back on it as the East prepare another line change. In the corner for Brendan Morris. Morris to his left hand, trying to dribble drive. Kicks out to Brady, Brady to Thorner. Thorner for three. No good this time, but Will Brady gets the rebound. So the Jumbos keep it. Second chances have provided a lot of scoring for the Jumbos so far as Will Brady fakes a three, goes to his right, and a nice find to Dylan Thorner who finishes through contact and the Jumbos are up 22-18. When Rodgers is the only big on the floor for the Jumbos, those are the type of bugs they need to get. The ball tends to stick on the perimeter when they don't have more than one big man in the game. Cuts like that are winning plays. Nate Karen now working. Tried to get it to Jones, and now he does. But there's going to be a call on the floor. I think that's going to be a foul on Will Brady, and a good foul at that. He was... Oh, outsized against Javon Jones. Yeah, that was really an unbelievable pass right there. Rodgers tried to kick it to get out of the way, but it managed to squeak by him. Uh, side out, probably a good end to that possession if you're the Jumbo's defense. A four-point lead with seven and a half minutes to go in the half. The East seemed to favor these huge line switches, taking out you know several players at once. And the last time they did this, the Jumbo's took advantage of that. Can they do it again? Arnold passes to Prowett Smith. Prowett Smith fires from three, unable to get it to go. And Will Brady with the rebound. Pushing the pace. Now to Theo Henry, the new sub. Henry to his left. Trying to find Brendan Morris. He can't. Brady now on it. Brady to Aronson. Truman Gettings back in the game for the Jumbos as well. The corner kick to Will Brady, who drives himself out to Will Theo Henry. Theo Henry, a righty layup. Unable to get it to go, but he picks up his own rebound, and he's fouled by Prowett Smith. Yeah, when the Eves bring in these huge mass substitutions, the Jumbos seem really committed to playing with pace and playing with physical ability. When they do that, they, they're running the East subs off the floor, trying to force them to put their starters back in. Let's see what they can do right here. Will Brady tried to sneak a pass to Brendan Morris, but Mark Taylor had the quick hands there, knocked it out of bounds, and it stays here with the Jumbos as Taylor checks right out for Spencer Spivey. So the eye is all good. Will Brady's inbound pass goes to Truman Gettings. Now with t uh, Tyler Aronson. Aronson with a nice interior pass to Gettings who gets fouled as he goes to the rim, and he will go to the line for two. Gettings is doing work in the pick-and-roll game so far. All of his screens are really something to deal with if you're the Eves. He goes up strong every time, and the Jumbos are making good decisions on their pick-and-roll so far, hitting their rolling big men in the pocket, making good decisions with their passes and their jump shots. Truman Gettings now at the line. First free throw is up and no good. So a bit of a slow in the scoring so far. It was a bit of a rapid pace in the second five minutes of this first half. Some confusion on the floor right now. Not sure what it's about, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Game got up to a real hot start. Three-pointers hitting from both teams. Kind of naturally has slowed down right now, especially with subs in the game for both teams. Seven minutes to go in the half. You'll look to see the starters come back in in a couple minutes and really put a push in towards the end of the half to extend this lead. As Prowitt Smith exits the game, not really sure what's going on right Looks there. Looks like a little bit of frustration over the ability to sub, but Glatzer comes into the game for Prowitt Smith. And getting his free, second free throw is good. He sends the jumbo lead to five. Spivey bringing it across the timeline. Brandon Arnold coming out to support. Arnold, interior pass, able to get it through, and then trying to kick it out, but unable to do so was roughly, and it's going the other way with the Jumbos. Yeah, Jumbos, good defense right there, doubled the cut. That ball somehow managed to get in there, but once it got in, no way to get out. Brennan Morris fires from three, and he gets it to go. Yeah, Jumbos obviously not a strong three-point shooting team, but when they can get it going, their offense does have the ability to be dynamic. Up eight right now with 6.30 left to go. The subs have put in good work for the Jumbos today. These non-Luke Rogers minutes have been a plus so far, and that's huge for the Jumbos in games as they win. 
Uh, their bench has really been a weak spot all year, but last game they scored 23 points. Games where they can score upwards of double digits, upwards of 20 points, are games that give the Jumbos a huge chance to come out with a victory. And a really nice hit there from Brennan Morris. Has had some struggles with a three-point shooting, but he, we all know he can do it. He's been historically great, obviously getting honor today on the senior day. And this, speaking about how, he, how prolific he has been from beyond the arc so far in his career, you saw a little bit why there, over the outstretched hand, able to get it to go. Yeah, mid-season, the Jumbos had several guys kind of just hit some shooting slumps. Casey McClare and Brennan Morris, uh, you know, a couple of veterans who we know can shoot. It's the breaks of the game. The, some guys had some bad weeks, but the last couple weeks, the team has really been coming together. Guys who were struggling are getting back into the flow of the game, and it's leading to much more competitive outcomes. Also interesting to note, uh, Williams is coming off of a 45-point loss to Wesleyan in their previous game. Uh, Tufts only lost by one to Wesleyan a couple weeks ago. So Williams is really looking. They, they want to avenge that loss. That was an embarrassing loss to the team that's ranked number one in the NESCAC. Down eight with 6.30 left to go in the first half. They want to get it back within you know a couple possessions before the end of the half. Right. Things are not going well for this Eve team right now. We'll see what the coaching staff draws up to try and change the tides a little. Jones kicks Karen. Karen swings. Roughly finds Jones. Jones uses the body and a little bit too much body. Will Brady draws the charge. Jumbo basketball. Yeah, stuck the elbow out into him and sent him flying. Easy call for the ref right there. And another example, when you play physical defense, uh, it really results in good possessions and turnovers from the opposing team. Tyler Aronson bringing it up for the Jumbos, and he's going to find Truman Gettings. Now back to Aronson. Aronson going to his left, kicks out to Henry. Theo Henry to Will Brady. Brady to Gettings. Gettings to Morris. Morris probing back to Gettings. Gettings looking for room to finish. Gets the roll. Gettings is dicing them up in the paint right now. You know, he has some of those Luke Rogers post packages. He can get himself an open shot, and he's only a freshman. Love to see that type of play from your freshman center. Karen goes to Glatzer. Glatzer now working on the bigger gettings, and taking to the paint is Roughly. Roughly, and that one's going to be called a charge as well. So back-to-back -back possessions of the charge. Jumbo's putting their bodies on the line here to generate turnovers. You love to see that as a team. Coming out of that timeout, you know, the Eves were looking for an advantage, but they've only found two back-to-back -back charging fouls, and the lead extended to 10. So Tyler Aronson brings it up. The Jumbo's really looking to continue here, not let this lead slip away. Aronson going to his left hand, and he finishes with the left off the glass. 12-point Jumbo lead. And I love the sub bringing Thorner back in the game. As I've been saying over and over again, play to your strengths. Thorner has, is the leading scorer for the team today. He's at three threes. His presence on the court really makes a difference. And a foul picked up there by Gettings on the rip-through move by Karen. Savvy move there by the big man. Luke Rogers checking back into the game for Truman Gettings. Yeah, Jumbo's getting back to their best lineups. Five minutes to go in the half. Nate Karen kicks out. Porter fakes a shot. Now he's going to try to shoot. Nope. Pass back out to Karen. Karen looks to go inside to Porter. And Luke Rogers was there. Picks it up. Will Brady bringing the other way. Brady's going to slow it down. Out to Dylan Thorner. Thorner now probing. Thorner with the left hand. Unable to get it to go. Going the other way. Declan Porter rebound for Williams. Porter pushing the pace. Had Glatzer. Didn't see him. Jones now with it. Jones out wide. Karen fires from the top of the key. Doesn't get it to go, but it's going to stay here with the Eves. These are good shots from the Eves right now. Obviously, we know they can shoot one through five, and in comes uh, you know, their leading scorer, Proet Smith. Uh, you made a good point earlier in that Porter, their leading shooter, he really loves that spot on the right side of the floor. He's a left, he's a left-handed shooter, so you know he loves to get it off. Uh, his left-hand step back move right there. We'll see if they try to force him off that spot. Jones now with it. The Eves back to that starting lineup as Jones's look is no good. Dylan Thorner skies over two Eves for a rebound. It's a 5-1-3. Down. 
A nice interior pass from Luke Rogers to Will Brady. And, and Brady able to get the roll. Great awareness right there. Take advantage of a five on three. Two Williams players hit the ground. Extends the lead to 14 points and another timeout from Williams. They can't get this momentum back in their favor. Jumbo's looking real nice right now. A pivotal last four minutes coming up in this first half. The Jumbos have continued to stretch this lead. Eves just brought in all of their starters to try and slow down this Jumbo offensive attack and create some offense of their own. Only 18 points here, 16 minutes in. Definitely not what they had envisioned for a high scoring team like this group. Just haven't shot the ball well yet. These next four minutes can decide this second half if it's going to be a close game or maybe the Jumbos able to run away with it here early. If you're the Jumbos and you look at your checklist on how to win, they are checking every box right now. Win the non-Luke Rogers minutes, they're doing that. Force Williams off the three-point line, they're doing that. Get good shots on offense from the perimeter, not off the dribble threes or in the shot clock. They're doing that. When you can hit every single box like that, you get out to 14-point leads. The question is, can they keep that up towards the end of the half and throughout the rest of the game? I think if you told Coach Linton going into this game that with four minutes left, they would have doubled up the amount of threes that this Williams team had made, he'd be pretty happy. Jones now with it. Jones going to his right, looking to pass. Now he shoots himself up off the glass, no good. He gets his own rebound and puts up a wild shot, but draws a foul, and he'll be going to the line for two. Jones has been a physical presence the whole game. Some calls haven't gone his way. A couple charging fouls, a couple non-calls. But the more he goes to the rim like that, the more free throws he's going to get. Can he convert the easy ones to try to cut into this lead? Javon Jones, first free throw is no good. Casey McLaren checking into the, the game for the Jumbos for Will Brady. Yeah, Jones only a 62% shooter from the line. But he gets the second one to go, so it is a 32-19 game as Roughly checks back into the game for the Eves. Roughly hasn't had quite the impact so far that he likely would have wanted, but he's been the best scorer for this Eves team off the bench all season long. Yeah, hasn't attempted a shot yet today. Definitely will want that to change if, if they're going to cut into this deficit. Luke Rogers going to his left hand, trying to force his way in, and he's hacked by Nate Karen. He'll go to the line for two. Yeah, fake dribble handoff gives Rogers just great position in the paint right there. He's got his defender on his back, and when you're in that position, you can do anything. Draw a foul, get a good shot under the rim, dish it off, draws the foul right there. Games where Rogers hits his free throws, like last game when he hit 10 free throws, are games that the Jumbos usually get out to comfortable leads. Missed that first one right there. Definitely a point of emphasis for the Jumbos' offensive attack. Yes, Rodgers gets to the line a lot because of that physicality. Conversion is tougher, though. For only 56% free throw shooter misses the pair there. Yeah, so that's, the Jumbo lead stays at 13. That's why uh, when he hit 10 of 14 uh, in last, last game, it was huge for the Jumbos. When those spurts come, it's just such a boon to the offense. Easy points to the line over and over and over again. Look to see them get back to that. Hope he can hit his free throws. Cole Prowett Smith finds Nate Karen. Karen with a step. Now the kick out. Spivey. Spivey finds Roughly. Roughly fires. Doesn't get it to go. Dylan Thorner skying for the rebound with Nate Karen. And there's going to be a foul called on Dylan Thorner. Karen, tallest player on the court. Skies for that rebound. Going to be hard to rip that one away from him. Not sure I saw a huge loose ball foul there, but understandable from the referees as Thorner exits the game. Carson Cohen checks in for him. Prowitt Smith passes out to Nate Karen. Karen looking for a pass, has Spivey. Spivey going to his right, Spivey turning, finds Karen. Karen, quick pass to the corner to Pruitt Smith, Pru and Pruitt Smith travels, and it'll be jumbo ball. <laughs> yeah, Smith not happy with that call, but uh, been called on both teams so far. Got to get that ball down before you take your first step. Williams really running guys through the paint, hoping to find open looks in the perimeter. Not working in the last couple possessions. Three minutes to go in the half. Brennan Morris now with it. Back to Carson Cohen. Cohen looking for the entry pass to Luke Rogers, but it's not quite there. Brennan Morris swinging it around to Tyler Aronson. Aronson going to his right, and now he steps back, fires. Front rim, no good. Nate Karen rebound. Not a great possession right there. That's what I'm talking about. When the ball sticks on the perimeter, even when you have guys moving, there's not much to do. Porter 
and a Glatzer and one. Porter got caught in the air for a second, was able to pass it to Glatzer, who took it himself to the right hand, able to get the and one, and he goes to the line to try and convert. Porter was ready to shoot that from very deep, aborted the shot in midair, but it gave his teammate an opportunity to have a free lane to the basket, and he converted, trying to get this lead back within 10 points. And the free throw's no good. Casey McLaren comes up with a rebound. Two minutes, two and a half minutes left to go. You really want to slow it down and get your shots. Don't settle for mid-range. Don't settle for a bad three. Run your best set right here. Brennan Morris looking to pass it in. Rogers now with it. Luke Rogers back to Brennan Morris. The ball's poked out, but Morris back on it. Morris looking to do some dribble moves. Rogers fires from three. No good. Spivey with a rebound. Spencer Spivey pushing the pace. Eves looking to cut this deficit. Passes in down low to Karen. Karen kicks out wide. Porter. Porter. No room. Casey McLaren on him. Now fires to the corner. Spivey for three. No good. Rogers rebound. Carson Cohen pushing the other way. Cohen slows the pace a little. Glatzer on him. Brennan Morris back to Carson Cohen. Carson Cohen oh, kicks out pass. top. Tyler Aronson for three. Got it. Look at the difference between that possession and the previous possession. It can be so obvious sometimes when the Jumbos just aren't clicking on offense. The ball sticks in the perimeter and they settle in to ISO ball. The previous possession, Brendan Morris kind of got stuck in the ISO game. They couldn't get a good shot off. That time, the ball moves around the perimeter, gets to the corner, and Cohen makes an unbelievable pass to uh, the reliable shooting Aronson on the perimeter extends the lead back to 14. There are just clear examples at times of when the Jumbo's offense is really in sync. A heck of a pass there, as you mentioned, from Carson Cohen, who's given the Jumbo's good minutes today. Had a bit of a struggle so far this season in a lot of ways. That is a great pass there. He's had some great contributions today. Part of the reason this Jumbo team sits up 35 to 21. Yeah, when Cohen penetrates and makes good passes and plays physical on the defensive end, he is a net positive. He hasn't taken a shot yet today, but he's been a positive when he's been on the floor. That's really what the Jumbos are looking for from their subs, and a huge pass right there from Cohen. It's really important to note, the Jumbos, in their wins, they average over 15 assists when in their losses it's closer to 10. It's a huge discrepancy between wins and losses. We know that when they pass the ball, when the ball moves freely, they win the game. So every time they fall back into the trap of ISO ball and contested jump shots, you really hate to see it. The more that they can get the ball moving, the more they can rack up those assists, the more likely they are to win. So Prowett Smith will take it the other way for the Eves. 14 point deficit now for this Williams team. Karen looking for a pass, fires out. Porter wanted to shoot it, but Morris was right there. And now Karen back on the ball, goes to Ruffley. Ruffley picks up the dribble, goes to Spivey. Shot clock running down, and that's a pass out of bounds. Jared, that's the 10th turnover for this Eves team so far. Only one for the Jumbos. Yeah, physical defense leads to turnovers, and that's what the Jumbos are doing. They're fighting over screens. They've got their bodies on their offensive men. They know what to do on the defensive end. They fell into the trap early in the game of sagging off the, the three-point line. Now they know physical defense can make this Williams team sweat. Luke Rogers looking to use the body on Karen, and he puts it up through contact and gets it to go. 16-point win for the Jumbos. Now interior pass to Javon Jones. Javon Jones puts it up and able to get it to go. Brings the lead back to 14. Quick answer from Williams right there. Under 40 seconds to go in the half. 11 second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Linton calling a play out. Jumbo's going to hold it to try to run that clock down. Carson Cohen holding at the top. And now the, jum the Jumbo offense starts moving in motion. Cohen back with the ball. Going to his right. Fires from three. Carson Cohen, no good. Rebound Spivey, and it's fought there with Luke Rogers, and they're going to call a jump ball. He has an uncanny ability to get his hands on any ball coming down in his near vicinity on the offensive end. His ability to gobble up offensive rebounds and force jump balls like that is really unmatched by anybody else in the NESCAC right now. In this game alone, he's given them several opportunities on the offensive end off of bad jump shots or bad three-point misses just because he just can get near the ball every single time. 
So that resets the shot clock as well. So the Jumbos will be able to hold for one. 10 seconds now on the clock. Aronson looking around. Seven seconds. Aronson going to his left. Steps back. Now to Rogers. Rogers looking for a shot. Fade away. No good. Rebounded by the Eves. And we will go to the half with the Jumbos leading the Williams College Eves 37 to 23. Yeah, that first half probably went as good as you could have hoped for if you were the Jumbos. They really did everything they wanted to do to stop the dangerous perimeter attack of the Eves. They hit their threes. They attacked the paint, they moved the ball, and on defense they were physical. They kept the Eves off the three-point line, and they really neutralized what they do best. 14-point lead is amazingly ideal for the Jumbos right now. Eves are going to go into the locker room. They want to make some adjustments. They need to get the guys they know can shoot. They need to get them better opportunities along the perimeter run guys like Porter off screens, got to get them more open looks, manufacture them open looks rather than have the offense come to them. We'll see if they'll be able to do it. A great half for the Jumbos. Once again, they lead the Eves 37 to 23. We'll be back after the half. probably learn more from him than he's learned from us. I think they're a real important part in my life. I can't describe it. It feels amazing. Team Impact is a national nonprofit that connects kids living with serious and chronic illness with college athletic teams, forming lifelong bonds and life-changing outcomes. the word about Team Impact, you have the power to change lives.
so hypnotic magical go 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 go
Let me show you something. Hello and welcome back to Cousins Gymnasium where the Jumbos lead the Eves 30 37 to 23, excuse me, after the first half. Jared, really good half of basketball. What have you seen from both teams and what do you expect to see in the second half? The Jumbos really controlled the pace in the first half. They played fast when they wanted to, they slowed it down when they wanted to, and they got good shots in the offensive end along with their physical defense. Williams really wasn't able to get to their spots to do what they wanted to do in the first half. I'm not a prophet, but knowing that their strength is three-point shooting and they were really unable to get good looks past the first minute of the first half, really low for them. They might want to shoot themselves out of this deficit. They got to get their best shooters, guys like Porter, even their center, Nate Care, and they got to get them good looks from the perimeter. It's not going to be natural. They got to run them off screens, got to run plays, and really get the ball where they want it to be if they're going to cut this lead down in the next 20 minutes. Good points there. Only 23 points in the first half for the Eves. A massive win for the Jumbo's defense as Jones goes towards his left, towards the hoop, and he's going to travel. No, they will call a foul before the travel happened. Yeah, not sure on the call there. It looked like maybe a trip, but it really is a testament 
the, to the Williams Eves that they, they have switchability, they have ball handling one through five. Jones is really, at this point, he's their four on the court right now, their power forward, but he can take his man off the dribble like that and draw a foul. Jones now with it. And goes to Prowett Smith. Prowett Smith to Karen. Shot clock running down at seven now. Karen trying to work on Rogers. Karen towards his right, fade away, no good, rebound Rogers. And credit to Will Brady in that possession. He fought over a screen to really disrupt the flow of the offense on that possession. Scrappy defensive play from the Jumbos. Dylan Thorner up top now, goes into Rogers. Rogers looking to create, back to Thorner. Thorner to his left. Goes to Rogers. Rogers backing down. Rogers toward the right and finishes going left with the right. Yeah, effective two man game right there. When you don't put a second man on Rogers and let him work in the paint, he's going to find buckets like that. Spy the interior pass, and that is collected but missed by Declan Porter. Active the jumbos hands. go the other way. Active hands from Morris right there just kind of made it a little awkward on the uh, up and under. Coming back, away, back the other way, see if they can uh, extend this lead up towards 20. Brady sets him up, up top. Rodgers working down low. Rodgers with the left. Rodgers fouled by Karen, and he would go to the line. Yeah, and Karen, he's a, you know, he's a valuable player, one of the best players on offense for Williams, but even though he's an inch taller than Luke Rodgers, he's just not a match with his size, and Rodgers is going to work in the paint right now putting his head down, getting to the basket, drawing fouls. Now, if he can hit his free throws, that would be huge for the Jumbos. Looking like Karen will check out after this free throw. Brandon Arnold set to check in. Luke Rogers makes the free throw. Yeah, only Karen's second foul, so not a lot to worry about there. No player on either team with three fouls, but if uh, Rodgers really gets ahead of steam going and is looking to exploit that matchup every time up and down the court, probably a good decision by Williams to switch it up, not let him do what he wants. Rodgers does miss the second of the pair, and the Eves go the other way. Crowett Smith, as we mentioned, the top scorer for this Eves team hasn't quite gotten it going today. Yeah, hasn't scored, in, uh, in fact, zero points on three shots. Arnold tries to find an interior pass, but finds Luke Rogers instead. Rogers pushing the court. Rogers taking it himself and draws a blocking foul. Yeah, the rare look. Rogers running the break right there, uh, looking to draw a charge for the Eves, but in the restricted zone, the little half circle. Easy call on the offensive end there. Rogers had options to pass or to drive, but he made the right choice, went straight to the hoop and draws two more foul shots with the Jumbos up 17 points. Almost looked like Luke Rogers was waiting for the defenders to come to him, and they never did. Takes the foul and puts the Jumbos up 18, making the first one. Rogers' second free throw is good as well. So the Jumbos up 19 now, 18 minutes to go. And when you have a big lead like that, honestly, it's hitting your free throws is one of the most important aspects of the game. It's easy buckets to make sure you stay ahead. You don't want to give up possessions like that when you get easy shots from the free throw line. Joe Von Jones now going. Jones kicks it out. Crowett Smith going towards the right. He's along the baseline. Now turns around. Out to Spivey. Spivey going towards his left. Kicks out. Jones from the corner. Rattles in and out. No good. Will Brady tries to get the rebound. Oh. Spivey gets it, and Spivey's going to pick up a charge. Yeah, Spivey a little bit out of control upon getting that rebound. Goes elbow first in to the defender. Easy call right there, and a great defensive stand from the Jumbos. Unlucky on the offensive board, but really well coached, you can see. Players are hedging off their man, making sure no one has open lanes to the hoop, and it's leading to tough shots that aren't falling for the williams Eves. How good is Will Brady at drawing those charges, Jared? Yeah, maybe a second in the game already. He's willing to put his body on the line. Dylan Thorner now with it for the Jumbos. Going towards his right. Now steps back. Jones on him. Brady swings to Aronson. Aronson looking to feed into Rodgers. But Arnold had Rodgers wrapped up down there, and they're going to call a foul. At this point, Williams knows where the ball is going, and they're just trying to prevent it from going there. Gettings enters the game. Rogers is coming out maybe to match up some of those minutes with, uh, excuse me, 
Nate Karen, but we'll see right here how they adjust with him out of the game. Been very Rodgers heavy so far. Gettings now on it, finds Aronson. Aronson Ooh. loses the handle. Spivey going the other way. And Declan Porter from three, no good. But a rebound, Javon Jones. Jones kicks it out. Cole Pruitt-Smith, no good. Good Crow looks. Smith couldn't get it to go. Good looks from the Williams, but just they haven't been able to get into a rhythm, and that's really been impacting them. Truman Gettings tries a three, and he knocks it down. Yeah, not the first guy you'd expect to be hitting threes, but when everything's going right, it's going right. The freshman center, Truman Gettings, knocks it down, extends the lead to 22 points. Truman Gettings with a little smile down at this end of the court. As you mentioned, everything going right for the Jumbos right now. And Gettings has been a huge part of it today off the bench. Jones kicks out. Porter tries another three. This one goes. Yeah, eventually he's going to start knocking them down. You really don't want him to get into a rhythm. That wasn't wide open. That was a contested three, but the lefty, he can hit those. Aronson tried the interior pass to Truman, but it's kicked. But it will remain with the Jumbos. Karen re-entering the game, even with Rodgers on the bench. Looks like Williams really wants to take advantage of these minutes and try to cut into that deficit because they are running out of time. Crazy enough, P Porter, even with his shooting struggles, leads this East team in points today. He's got eight. Will Brady kicks up top to Dylan Thorner. Thorner surveying the defense. Now he's going to go in towards the right and finishes a move. with a scoop layup under the outstretched hand of Nate Karen. Yeah, he had the ball on a string on that possession, cutting through the defense, and a little scoop layup to take advantage of, you know, high arm defense right there. Leads to the bucket, lead back up over 20. Roughly going the other way. Now Truman getting steals it. Eves wanted to travel, didn't get it. Jumbo still with it. Carson Cohen on the ball now. Cohen to the corner. Will Brady's there. Brady thought about the shot, didn't take it. And Carson Cohen settles at the top of the key. Dylan Thorner, step back three, no good. Private Smith tried to get the rebound, fought with Brennan Morris there. I think they're going to say that Private Smith touched it while he was out of bounds, and it will stay with the Jumbos under the basket. Yeah, refs consulting looked to me like it was off the Jumbos, and it indeed was going to be Williams' ball. Uh, Thorner's been the best three-point shooter today for the Jumbos, so you're okay with that shot on that possession. 15 minutes to go, 21-point lead. Uh, they've got Theo Henry guarding full court on Proet Smith, really trying to take him out of the game, take away any chances of a comeback. Karen has it at the top of the key. Going his left on Gettings. Now turns right and gets it to go. Yeah, when Luke Rogers is in the game, he can take advantage of that. He has moves in the paint. And now, look, Rogers coming to check right back in. And Truman Gettings picks up a travel there. Jumbo lead stays at 19. Rogers coming in to keep them at bay. The thought process likely is, and Jared, you tell me what you think. Rodgers yeah. gets them to the eight-minute mark or so, and then maybe you can rest him if the lead stays the same. Yeah, I think these Karen Rodgers minutes are really a big part of the equation. Right there, he goes back to the paint, uses his ability to get a little hook shot, and knocks it down. So maybe he wasn't Gettings wasn't the issue again. Yeah, you definitely can't see Rodgers playing the next 14 minutes. So get him in, extend the lead, and then save him for those last few minutes of crunch time. Dylan Thorner tries an interior pass to Luke Rogers. It's broken up. Spencer Spivey's taking it the other way for the Eves. Spivey going to his right. Spivey looking to pass and loses the handle. Carson Cohen now going. The Jumbos have numbers. Cohen slows it down. Passes out. Casey McLaren trying to finish through contact. No foul called. Stoddard on it now for the Eves. Jumbos transition defense has been really good today. They're swarming the ball in on the fast breaks, and that's stopped a lot of easy buckets for the Eves. Nate Karen going towards his left. Now turning around, trying to create some separation with the body and finishes an and one on Luke Rogers. Karen has given Rogers a little bit of a taste of his own medicine. He's been going to work these last couple possessions. Uh, he's, he can shoot, we know that, but he's really underrated in the paint. He can make all the same moves Rogers does. He's very shifty. Uh, lead now back under 20. They're feeding him in the paint. He's up to 11 points on five of eight shooting. Uh, dangerous look right now for the Williams East on offense. And when that gets going, then maybe we'll start to see them kick it out more and that three-point shot will start falling. 
Karen gets the roll on the free throw, and the Eves have a little 7-0 run here, clawing back into this one. And remember, Prowitz-Smith hasn't even scored yet, so their offense can look out a lot more dangerous than it is right now. Rogers pass. Carson Cohen now kicks it out. Casey McLaren going towards the hoop. Gets stripped, and Javon Jones is on it for the Eves. And sometimes you just want Cohen to go up and make and take that shot, draw a foul, not necessarily always try and kick for an open shot. Spivey with it. Goes to Karen. Expect a timeout if another quick bucket follows right here from Williams. Prowitt Smith tries it, can't get it to go. Rogers secures the rebound. They really need an answer right here with the lead cut down to 14. Tyler Aronson now pushing and finds Luke Rogers. Luke Rogers with the roll, and the lefty layup is good. The lead back up to 16. Yeah, exactly what you were looking for. They had a couple possessions right there where the ball was stalling out. Uh, some unlucky breaks, loose balls not going their way. When you get back into that two-man game and get back into what you know will work, that's how you keep the lead extended. You know, 13 minutes to go. The game's not over yet. 16-point lead can definitely be surmounted, and we've seen at times this season the Jumbos have gotten out to a lead, but they've fallen back into bad habits. Iso ball, haven't gotten good shots, and those leads have shrunk. Linton, Coach Linton is going to stress to them right now, play team basketball, keep the ball moving, eat the clock, and they can keep that lead extended. If you're Williams, uh, you know, right now, Nate Karen is on fire in the paint, but they need to use that to get shots for the whole team. Rogers, at some point, he's going to win some of those defensive battles in the paint. If they can get guys like Porter and particularly Cole Prowitt-Smith going, who's 0 for 5 right now, that's really going to be their key in getting back in the game. Prowitt-Smith doesn't have any points, doesn't have any rebounds. He's, I mean, excuse me, doesn't have any assists. He's not impacting the game. If they want a chance, he needs to be involved on both ends of the court. Yeah, Jared, good points. The telling number, 14 turnovers for this Williams team already and have only forced five against the Jumbos. So they're going to have to take care of the basketball if they want any chance of coming back. Yeah, this season, uh, Williams just hasn't been an unbelievable defensive team. They hold their opponents to decent, uh, you know, low shooting numbers, but they're not particularly active on the perimeter and getting steals towards the bottom of the NESCAC in steals per game at around five. Today, they've been exploited on that. The Jumbos have been racking up the steals, and they've been unable to get any as the Jumbos drop into a full-court press. And Javon Jones is fighting there in the corner with Carson Cohen and it's going to be jumbo ball. That's an interesting look. Up 16, surprise full court press, and it works right off the bat. Putting pressure on a team that needs to come out and get quick buckets is a really smart move from Coach Lynn. And a kick uh, ball. Really aggressive idea there. The jumbo is trying to keep the foot on the throttle. Refs consulting again, not sure what the confusion is. Looked like an easy kick ball. Nate Karen really spearheading what was that mini comeback from the Eves. We'll see if they keep trying to feed him down low. He had a lot more success working on the block than he has working on the perimeter so far today. Yeah. Cohen's the trigger man for the inbound. Into Rogers, who goes back to Aronson. Aronson to his left kicks to Cohen. Tyler Harrison reinitiating the offense. Going towards his right now. Crossing over to the left. Tries a righty layup from the left side and he's fouled by Spivey who did not like the call. Yeah, Spivey thought he got that one clean but, you know, he's got a real tight handle, Aronson does. Gets the ball to the left side of the court and goes up with the right hand, forces kind of an awkward defensive attempt right there, and draws the foul. 12 minutes and 41 seconds to go right here. Two big free throws in terms of keeping this lead where it is. Anson, usually a great free throw shooter, can't get that first one to go. And he's had a solid game so far today. Seven points and four assists, shooting three of six from the field. He's really been one of the more consistent contributors for the Jumbos this season. And Aronson can't get the second one either, so the jumbo lead stays at 16. Yeah, free throw shooting has not been their strong suit so far today. Karen's got it up top, goes to Glatzer. And Karen now working on the block again. Luke Rogers on him, going to the left now. Tries to turn to the right. Steps through, and he's fouled by Rogers. That's going to be Rogers' third. Yeah, Karen's getting where he wants to go right now. Uh, Rogers is the bigger guy, and earlier in the game he was winning this matchup by just pure physicality. But here in the second half, maybe you know a little foul shy, and Karen is getting where he wants to go on the low block. 
our eyes on the bench, and more specifically Truman Gettings, but he stays seated, so Rodgers will stay in the game here with three fouls. What do you think about that, Jared? I think with 12 minutes to go and a 15-point lead, maybe Linton's looking to put the game out of reach now instead of bringing Rodgers back in later. But I think with this lead back down closer to 10, Rodgers gets a brief rest and comes back in to close the game. Brendan Morris now. Luke Rodgers. Jumbo swinging it around, but Rodgers going to keep it himself. Go with the left hand. Oh. Unable to get it to go. Nate Karam with the rebound, and Cole Prowett Smith will push the other way. Everything but the finish right there. A beautiful spin move but couldn't get it to go. Proud Smith doubled on the baseline. Now he kicks out Karen for three, and he gets it to go. The jumbo lead all of a sudden is down to 11. Yeah, and here comes Truman Gettings back into the game. As I was saying, when Karen gets those possessions in the paint and gets those looks, and Proud Smith starts getting involved, they're going to get open looks on the outside, and that's what happened. Karen makes them pay. Now 17 points for Nate Karen. Tyler Aronson going to his right. Now he steps back. He fires from three, and he gets it to go. How about that for a response? That is how you respond right there, and a beautiful three off the dribble. Energy really building here in Cousins Arena. Going to be an away from the ball foul. I think they're going to get Luke Rogers on that, and that would be his fourth. Yeah, Coach, Coach Linton, Linton not happy. Not happy. Gettings was already on the side waiting to sub in for Rodgers. Really a sloppy foul right there. Up to four. Now he may have to sit a little bit longer. Uh, Linton very obviously angry with, what's, with that turn of events. But up 14, they may be able to put this game out of reach even without Rodgers. We'll see. How big is that Aaron's in three now? Jones loses the handle. And Tyler Aronson gets it, going the other way with numbers. Aronson, a oh, pass right to pass. Gettings, and Gettings is fouled. Aronson is playing with all sorts of energy right now. An unbelievable pocket bounce pass on the fast break. And Gettings really can't be understated how good he's been today, filling up those non-Luke Rogers minutes. Two big free throws for him right here. Such a great job today by Tyler Aronson, being that steadying force for that offense. I feel like so many times now we've said... Oh, what a pass by Tyler Aronson. That was a dime there. Yeah, and for a jumbo team that has really struggled racking up the assists, occasionally they have good ball movement, but they really haven't had a real number one passer so far this year. Aronson has been able to fill that role at times, especially today, and he's put together some, some real pretty passes to go along with his 10 points. Truman Gettings missed the first, and the second one is knocked down. So the jumbo lead back out to 15. Prowitt Smith slowly bringing it across. Setting up some action maybe. Spivey goes back to Prowitt Smith. Prowitt Smith now goes to Arnold. Arnold with the other backup center gettings on him and he's unable to get it to go. Brennan Morris with the rebound but there's going to be a foul called. The yeah. Eves were looking for a tie up there, didn't get it. Instead a foul is called. Yeah, want to point out Gettings, great defensive position on that uh, possession really stayed in front of his man, forced an awkward shot, and when two guys come at a, a man with the ball, there's going to be a reach-in foul right there. It was called, and now seven fouls against the Eves is leading to, I believe, a one-and-one, one, or at least free throw shots here for the Jumbos, and that is huge. With 10 minutes to go, to be in the bonus the entire way out, that really changes the way that you can extend your lead. Brennan Morris unable to get it to go, but Truman Gettings gets a rebound. Kicks out, and the fire from three is good from Will Brady. The lead back out to 18. This Tufts team has had fight today. You know, every time they've been slightly punched back by Williams, they have not been afraid to go and show what they can do. They continue to make sure this lead doesn't fall too close uh, to get within range. Roughly going to his right, now spins to the left, and able to get it to go over the outstretched arms of Brennan Morris. And that was his first basket today. Several important contributors for the East have yet to score. That was the first two points for Roughly. Aronson kicks back out. Morris wants a shot, not quite there, but he's going to go to the left, and he's able to finish. And really uses his body with great leverage there to keep his defender off to the side, and the threat of the kick stops the help defense from getting there. A great drive to the basket and extends the lead back up to 18 for the Jumbos with under 10 minutes to go. 
As you mentioned there, Jared, it feels like every time the Eves are just about ready to, to keep making a run, the Jumbos hit a big shot, force a big turnover, do something well. Been a great display here from the Jumbos in the second half. Yeah, maybe it's just still in our minds from earlier this season before Luke Rogers uh, came back from injury. It felt like a lot of times the Jumbos were destined to let other teams go on runs. The ball would start sticking, and that's why they were losing so often at the start of the season. But really, for the last half of the season, they have been that team. They have been, you know, consistent game in and game out, winning 9 of 11. And now it's become commonplace for this type of ball to be seen here at Cousins Arena, where they're not afraid to punch back. They're not afraid to, you know, keep the momentum going and keep those leads strong. They're not bound to, you know, let other teams get back in the game anymore, and we're seeing that today. So we're halfway through the second half. The jumbo lead out to 18. Obviously can't feel safe yet, but the jumbos do have to be incredibly happy with not just their game today, but the progress they've made recently. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I've said the whole season that when the Jumbos play team basketball, that is how they win, and today has been a prime example of that. Thorner with 15, Rogers with 13, Aronson with 10, Gettings with 8. Team basketball is how they can come out of these games with wins, and they're really proving it. And the Jumbos shooting 50% from three today. Felt like they were due for one of those as Prowett Smith is stuffed by Gettings. Nate Karen now with an interior pass to Roughly, and Roughly gets that to go. Yeah, Gettings with a great block there, but Karen, really an underrated passer, the leading assist man at center for the Eves. They can run the offense through him, and he can make some nifty plays like that. Thorner out to Aronson. Aronson looking for Gettings on the roll, but the ball is stripped from him, but they're going to get a foul on the Eves. Yeah. They don't seem too mad about that. Looks like they got him on the arm. Happened a couple times so far right now. Aronson's stop and start ability really leads to uh, you know, contact when he's so willing to stop on a dime and go up for a jump shot. And as we mentioned, in the bonus, every single one of these will result in foul shots for the Jumbos. But another consultation from the refs, like a third or fourth time this has happened today. The refs have been thorough for sure. And the Eve coaching staff and the Jumbo coaching staff both not happy. <laughs> Great energy from, from Coach Litton so far. Not sure what the confusion is. Some rapid fire subs going here. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's one and one. They're allowing subs in before the first shot. And he makes it anyways. Aronson missed a pair earlier. Not that time. And the second one is good as well. Tyler Aronson, one of three jumbos in double digits today and counting. Just a really well-rounded offensive attack. Indeed it is. Under 10 minutes to go here. Maybe a last push coming from the East. Nate Karen going towards his left. Now he spins towards his right. Looks a little fadeaway hook and he gets it to go. Really nice finish there from Nate Karen. Karen has been nasty as usual. The difference has been they've been unable to get their three-point shooters really off and into open opportunities around the perimeter. They've been relying on Karen to hit those shots in the paint, which he's done, but it hasn't been enough so far. Carson Cullen going towards the left. Now he kicks out. Will Brady, one more pass to Brennan Morris. Brennan Morris fakes the three, one dribble, and a little elbow jumper gets it to go. The Jumbos have been using pump fakes very effectively the entire game. Williams is rushing out to the perimeter and they've been unable to really uh, stick on their feet. They've been falling for pump fakes the whole game and good advantage taken by the Jumbos right there. Cole Prowitt-Smith misses that one as well. Just can't find his shot so far in this game. Nate Karen with it, picks up the dribble. Goes to Porter. Porter going towards the left and a tough shot over Truman Gettings, unable to get it to go and the Jumbos come the other way. Will Brady kicks out, Brennan Morris thinks about a shot. Now the interior pass to Truman Gettings. Gettings, nice pass to Cohen. Cohen out to the corner, Will Brady for three. Got it to go. Brady and Morris have been huge. It's senior night and they can feel it. 
Morris is three for three, Brady is four for six, and both have put in huge minutes today so far. Jones with a kick, Karen from the top of the key gets that one. Nice answer there from Nick Karen. She really, Who's really been the only Eve soft in the second half. She really might be their best shooter at center. That's at this point he's over 50% for the year on a very reasonable amount of attempts. Really unbelievable for your five to be doing that. Carson Cohen looks like he had his pocket picked a little from behind, but they're going to say that went off him. Nope. And now a conference of the referees. Yeah, it didn't look like he could have purposefully thrown the ball out of bounds like that. Ball was tipped. I uh, also want to give credit to Morris and Brady again for their perimeter defense so far. You know, one of the reasons why Prowett Smith is 0 for 7 with zero points is they have just been locking him down playing physical defense. Dylan Thorner, a little pull-up jump shot, gets it to go. So the jumbo lead back stretched out to 20. Glatzer goes inside to Karen. And Karen, nice pass to Glatzer who's able to finish it. Another really nice pass by the big man, Karen. He's doing it all today. 22 points, seven rebounds, and two assists. When, when you're uh, second best or best player's doing that, you would hope the lead would be, uh, you know, the, the deficit would be smaller than 18 points. Truman Gettings able to finish through contact, and he's now got 10 points. Which means five jumbos are in double digits so far. That well-rounded scoring attack has been the key so far. Karen at the top, kicks to the corner, Spivey. Spivey with a nice dribble move. Goes up for a dunk, didn't quite dunk it, but got fouled and the shot went in. He went up with confidence and confidence pays off sometimes. Gettings matched his energy, went up and tried to meet him there, but the ball fell through the hoop and one opportunity, but strong physical play on both sides. I'll say that was possibly the most anticlimactic and one I've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> Spivey gets the second one to go. Or the, excuse me, the only one to go. So the lead down to 17. And Prout Smith re-enters the game, as I've mentioned, 0 of 7 from the floor. At this point, they may not even be looking his way on offense, but something's got to give with a 17-point lead for the Jumbos. Thorner goes to Carson Cohen at the top. Cohen looking around. Kicks out to Morris. Morris wanted it, but it wasn't there. Tyler Aronson now, shot clock running down. Seven seconds left. Cohen to his right, wrap around pass to Thorner. Thorner goes for a shot and it's blocked by Jones. Pruitt Smith pushing the other way for the Eves. Joe Von Jones, Jones. Righty layup, gets it to go, and nice a finish. Great screen from Nate Karen, really set up that drive to the hoop. Lead down to 15, under six minutes to go. Interesting to see if Luke Rogers re-enters the game and a timeout from Coach Layton trying to stop a little bit of that momentum. Yeah, so 5.40 left in this one. The Jumbo's lead is at 15. Foul call, excuse me. Timeout called by the Jumbo's. It's that type of situation where you're in a bit of a middle ground where the game feels safe, but you can't take your foot off the gas just quite yet, just enough time. We've seen the Eves team show some scoring ability and that's without shooting the ball great. So Coach Linton may not want to take that risk. Yeah, you're absolutely right. With under six minutes to go here and the, you know, the Eves not shooting at their maximum potential, you really can't take the risk of taking your foot off the gas. Leads can come and go in the blink of an instant. And with under six minutes, you definitely are gonna see the Jumbos aren't empty in their bench yet. They're not quite confident that this game is over. Uh, the, for, the, for the East, they just haven't been able to get the ball going from behind the three-point line. Don't expect them to start just chucking threes right now, but if they can start getting some good looks, they, they have a chance to cut into this deficit with uh, under five minutes, to six minutes to go. Remember, you know, so far this has looked like a one-sided game, but Williams has a better record overall at 14-2 and two than the Jumbos. And they're only one spot behind them in the NESCAC rankings. This game was meant to be competitive, and we'll see down the stretch if it can really get to the game we thought it would be. 
So it'll be jumbo ball here to inbound after their timeout. Thorner's the trigger man. He goes in easily to Cohen. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Luke Rogers working down low. Looking to go to that righty shot and gets the shot he wants, just unable to get the bunny to go. And Nate Karen clears for the rebound. Karen at the top of the key. Goes to Stoddard. Stoddard for three. Gets it to go. And then maybe the st shot starting to fall for the Eves. Look for a quick response here from the Jumbos. 12 point lead now for the Jumbos. Five minutes to go. Dylan Thorner going to the left. Jones on him. And he throws a turnover to Alex Stoddard. Stoddard pushing the other way. Goes out wide, Prowitt Smith, Prowitt Smith. Gonna pull it out, got Karen at the top, Karen for three, and he gets it to go, and all of a sudden, it's a single digit lead. And that's what the Williams Eves can do to you. Gotta close out quicker on a guy like Nate Karen, who's just been dominating so far in this game. Lead under 10, game's looking a lot more competitive all of a sudden. Tyler Aronson pulls up, and there's the response. Time and time again, he's come through and he did it again right there. His jump shot has looked pure today. Really big shot there from Aronson. Karen working down low. Left hand, trying to go to the right. Tries to finish over Rogers, doesn't get it to go. And Thorner clears. Aronson pulls it out. Willing to eat some clock here. Aronson takes it to the lane, but he's rejected by Karen. Nate Karen really kept this Eves team in the game in the second half. So much of his scoring has come here after halftime. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Tyler Aronson with the hand handle goes inside to Rogers. Rogers tries to finish with the left hand, can't get it to go. Jones had the rebound originally, and the East collect the ball. And you can see Ryby going the other way. You can see Rogers with four fouls. Really doesn't want to pick up another one on an offensive rebound attempt. See if they call a travel right there, and they do. Rogers very cognizant of the fact that he has four fouls. He doesn't want to pick up a fifth this late in the game. Spivey just unable to keep his footing there as Glatzer checks into the game for Prowitt Smith. Yeah, it's crunch time and Proud Smith is on the bench. At this point, I think they realize they got to go with the guys who are contributing so far today. Aronson going towards his right, finds Thorner in the corner. Thorner can't get it to go. Karen with the rebound and Glatzer pushes the pace. The Eves do need to go quickly. Yeah. Not a ton of time left. See, they go quick and they get a bucket there. If you're the Jumbos, that shot in the last possession was a little bit too quick. You want to be burning some clock. Early shot clock threes are not helping you out right now, especially when the Eves are pushing the pace like they are. 10 point lead for the Jumbos, three minutes to go. Tyler Aronson gets a screen from Rogers. Now he goes out to Brady. Brady going in the lane, Rogers with it now. Rogers to Thorner. Thorner going to the left hand. Thorner rejected by Jones. It'll stay with the Jumbos with only three minutes, three seconds, excuse me, left on the shot clock. And suddenly the Eves are flying all over the court on defense as Porter re-enters the game. Another shooting threat. Under three minutes to go though. Again, Jumbos, if they can control the pace, only three seconds left on the shot clock. If they can keep getting good shots, they want to put this game away. Aronson fires from the corner, can't get it to go. And the Eves will get the ball back under their own basket. And now a big possession right here. The Eves want a good look and they want a bucket. A huge defensive stop from the Jumbos here could help put this game maybe out of reach with under three minutes to go. Spivey will bring it up for the Eves. Karen's the screener at the top of the key. He has Karen at the top. Karen thought about the shot, passed out to Stoddard instead, and Stoddard hits, and it's a seven point lead. And now it's looking a lot like the start of this game where they were manufacturing good looks from the perimeter, and when they get good looks, they knock it down. That's what they're good at. Brennan Morris at the top. Will Brady now, down low, Luke Rogers, looking to go right, Karen fell, Rogers finishes. 
nine yeah. point game. Yeah, he wanted to draw a charge. Probably not a good decision right there. Not enough contact for that to be uh, an easy call for the referee. And you take the risk right there. You don't get the call and it's an easy bucket. Didn't go his way. Coach not happy for the Eves, but the lead back up to nine for the Jumbos. Quite a gamble there by Karen. But if he'd gotten the call, that's number five on Rogers as well. Exactly. So there's a risk reward right there. But uh, with the game so close and two and a half minutes left, maybe you just want to put a body on him. But Karen can't speak of how well he's played so far today. Up to 25 points, nine rebounds, and four assists on nine of 13 shooting. At this point, if you're the Eves, you don't need a three-point shot every time down the floor. You can come back with efficient shots. Karen is probably the guy they're going to look for to get them a bucket. It was a really nice setup on that play before. A little pick and pop. Karen was at the top of the key, and Rogers sucked into the middle. Karen, unselfish though, passed to the better three-point shooter, presumably, and Stoddard, who knocked it down. Yeah, and Tufts adjusted, and they're getting up on Karen on the three-point line, but now he, as a great passer that he is, is making the extra pass to get other guys open. And when the Eves have it working like that, it's dangerous to see. Only two minutes left, though, so they need buckets every time down the court. Spivey will bring it across for the Eves. Luke Rogers on the bench, so Truman Gettings in there for the Jumbos. Stoddard on the three-point line, and they're going to get a touch foul on Will Brady. Yeah, off the ball foul right there. Jumbos had a foul to give. So not the worst decision right there as Rodgers and Thorner re-enter the game. That was their last one. Glatzer's the trigger man on the inbound. Looking for Spivey in the corner. Spivey's got it. He fires from three. Front rim, no good. And Brennan Morris clears with the rebound. That was a well-designed play and got a good look, but I would have thought to see a guy like, ooh, excuse me, as the ball is fought for on the ground, timeout granted. Excuse me, I would have thought they would run a play like that for Porter. They were unable to when the threes missed. Physical defense, though, forces a near turnover. A really nice job there by Tyler Aronson, too, to hold the ball into the outstretched arms and get the timeout off. Crucial to not have a turnover there and give another chance for the East. Yeah, not sure Linton, Coach Linton wanted to waste the timeout there, but you'll gladly do it if it means keeping possession. Energy from the crowd, energy from both teams present right now with a minute 40 to go. Big possession coming up for the Jumbos. Use the clock and get a good look. That's what's important. Have to think they're going to look inside here for Rodgers as he checks back into the game. Yeah, and Rodgers rallying the team right now. The senior captain that he is on senior night looking to secure another win in this last weekend of regular season basketball. Dylan Thorner to inbound and he throws it to the backcourt where Tyler Aronson is there. Thorner with it now. Rogers screening. Rogers now with the ball. He's oh, at the top of the for key. A foul. Only four seconds on the shot clock. Brendan Morris going to have to force one up and he gets it to go. That should do it. The jumbo lead is stretched to 12. Big Brendan Morris three on senior night. And a quick shot leads to a tough board. They want to put it out of reach right now. 12 point lead. The Jumbo's going to go slow. I think it took every inch of willpower to not shoot that. <laughs> for Brennan Morris, a three point shooter, to not fire there. And another time out, it looks like. But that was a huge turn for the Jumbo's. Brennan Morris has not missed a shot today. He is four for four and is now the Jumbo's sixth player in double digit scoring. The balanced scoring attack, especially from the seniors on senior night, has really been something else. Four for four from the field, two for two from three. On that possession, it looked like Luke Rogers got fouled, maybe several times, but there was no call. It forced Morris to get a shot up and he knocked it down. I've never seen a stat sheet quite like this, Jared. Six players have scored for the Jumbos, six players in double figures. Yeah, really, really unbelievable. Every player who's scored has scored in double figures. When, you're play, when your team can do that, you're going to get out to leads even against good teams like this. We've seen the fight from Williams. They never gave up. But on a, on a day like this, a night like this, the Jumbos were willing and able to punch back. And by the way, Karen, the only scorer in double digits for the Eves. 
just have not had that same ability to find baskets from other men besides Nate Karen. An interesting lineups from Williams. Prowitt, Smith, and Declan Porter on the bench, maybe for a defensive look. They're, they need a last ditch effort if they're gonna get out of this hole. Carson Cohen steps in the backcourt and the Eves will have the ball, but only a minute to go in a 12 point lead. Yeah, it's the type of break you need if you're the Eves and here comes Porter and Nate Karen. But yeah, we'll see if it's enough as Rogers re-enters the game as well. Rogers was waiting on Karen to check into the game and when he did, he came with him. Spivey going to the right. Spivey along the baseline. Corner three from Porter. Front rim no good. Will Brady rebound. And, a quick and the foul. East are now playing the foul game. Yeah, with 50 seconds left and over 10 point lead. Playing the foul game. This game's probably out of reach. Valley effort from Williams to get back into it. Some big free throws right here to truly end the game with 50 seconds left to go. A really impressive effort today from this jumbo team. And you'd love to see the senior Luke Rogers rallying the team around him as he has been throughout the whole game. The crowd has been in it here at Cousins Arena and hopefully the Jumbos are walking out here with a confident and decisive victory. Brady makes the front end of the, of the one and one and the Jumbo lead now out to 13. And the second one is good as well. Jumbos finishing the season with their best basketball. That's what you want to do. Nate Karen tries a three, doesn't yeah. get it to go. Dylan Thorner with the rebound. And another foul, even though they're down 14. And you're right, it is the final weekend of the year and this will be the Jumbos fifth straight victory. They have come on in a huge way the second half of the season at the perfect time, extending their record in the NESCAC to seven and two. They're feeling confident going into the playoffs. Not something people would have thought after the first couple weeks of this year, but the return of Luke Rogers drastically changed the outlook of the season for the Jumbos and suddenly they're winning 10 of 12 going into the playoffs. Thorner's free throw is good and it's looking like the East will clear the bench amid defeat in this one. Jumbo crowd is very happy with the outcome of this one so far. One more game tomorrow in the regular season against Colby. Uh, I believe, and then on to the playoffs. And the second one is good as well. And we're gonna get some last minutes for the seniors. Kieran Kindig re-enters the game. A, good, a sweet moment for a sweet victory on seniors night. Lee brings it up the court for the Eves. So going forward, this is the style of basketball you think that the Jumbos have to play to have success in the NESCAC tournament, don't yeah. you, Jared? I've been stressing it all season long. The good ball movement, physical defense, less iso ball, it really leads to wins. I've said it over and over and over again, and as they've continued to show that type of ball, that they can do that, they've won more and more. If they can take this kind of play on both sides of the floor into the NESCAC tournament, they're gonna be hard to beat. Everyone knows two years ago before the season was canceled, they were there sitting pretty in the Elite Eight. Can they do it again? I'm not sure, but they're definitely feeling more confident than they were a couple weeks ago. As Ryan Moon knocks down the free throw, Theo Henry having a laugh after that foul that he committed. And, and now Jumbos can just run out the clock with their seniors on the court. A sweet victory, 81-66 over. Williams. That'll do it here at Cousins Arena. Thank you all for tuning in. The Jumbos 81, the Eve 66. I'm Noah Goldstein alongside Jared Cohen here. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.
Don't wanna let you know You're so hypnotic, magical Go, 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 go Post game victory against Williams on senior night. We you guys came into this game knowing Williams was very dangerous from outside the arc. A great three point game. What do you think you guys did to key in and stop them from taking advantage of that? Yeah, you know, we had a really great week of practice. Um, all the guys were locked in on our scout, and it was just great. Seniors, obviously, it was a huge weekend for them. They played their butts off tonight, um, and happily, we got to get a dub for them. Yeah, as you mentioned, senior night. Seniors got their last minutes on the court in front of their families. How did it feel to go get a win for them? It was awesome. Those guys are my best friends, and I'll always remember these memories um, for the rest of my life. So getting them in there, seeing them all playing, be, touching the floor with them last time uh, here on Cousins is always really special. All right, last game of the regular season tomorrow. Heading into the playoffs with some momentum. How are you guys feeling as a squad and your hopes for the NESCAC playoffs? Feeling great. We're hot. We're hot. Ten of our last 12. We're going to keep it rolling right into playoffs, win this NESCAC title, and go into the NCAs and win the whole thing. Uh, hottest team in America right now. Yeah. Love to hear it. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>